I... I thought you were dead. My death was... greatly exaggerated. So, you're the punk I've heard about. <laughs> hey! So, that's pretty freaking cool, huh? It's been around three years since the first season of Prehistoric Planet hit Apple TV+, and two years since the end of Prehistoric Planet Season 2. For all intents and purposes, it seemed like the brand was dead. Darren Nash, the lead paleontological consultant, has inferred or outright stated that Apple pretty much wants nothing to do with the brand outside of reusing clips in future projects. They did, however, recently re-edit footage and animate some new footage for a Lightroom exhibition that projects the dinosaurs onto giant dinosaur-sized screens in a cube-shaped room. So that could indicate there's still some interest in the brand. I had heard rumors of a third season of Prehistoric Planet focusing on the Ice Age or Pleistocene Epoch for the last two years, since the end of PHP Season 2. Some concept art for Prehistoric Planet had been uploaded by artist James Grant well after the airing of both seasons, two pieces of which feature Cenozoic mammals. One showcases the giant Dinotherium in a forest, and the other a fight scene between a woolly mammoth and some people. These provided further proof for the rumor, but were shot down for various reasons I cannot fully remember nor find at this time. Most likely the artist or people involved with Prehistoric Planet coming out and saying it had nothing to do with a new season. Harrison Duran, a professional and commercial paleontologist, was going to hook up Anz Rosman and Kara Talv, the musicians who made much of the score in the original PHP, with the Boneyard Alaska guy, who owns some land in Alaska and uses water to melt bone-containing permafrost on that land. The artist wanted to use bits of mammoth ivory in their bespoke instruments, but since the production companies wanted to avoid any and all possible controversy, they ended up backing out of the idea. Regardless of any of that, it was just a taste of what would turn out to be true. Now, Apple TV Plus has officially announced a third season of Prehistoric Planet, titled Prehistoric Planet Ice Age. According to Mac Daily News and probably more news outlets by the time this video greets your ears, the new show promises to be a, quote, sweeping new installment of the award-winning natural history series from executive producers John Favreau and Mike Gunton, produced by BBC Studios Natural History Unit with support from the photorealistic visual effects of Framestore and narrated by Golden Globe Award and Olivier Award winner Tom Hiddleston with an original score by Hans Zimmer, Anz Rosman, and Kara Talv from Bleeding Fingers Music." End quote. It's stated the show will have five episodes and will premiere November 26, 2025. It, quote, "...invites viewers into a dramatic new era of prehistoric life, millions of years after the extinction of the dinosaurs, an era shaped by ice, the intense fight to survive, and the rise of a new cast of giants, the iconic megafauna." End quote. Um, actually, any large animal is considered megafauna. Anyway, the news articles go on, quote, Prehistoric planet Ice Age uses the latest scientific research and cutting-edge visual effects to bring this frozen world to life like never before, unveiling the spectacular habitats and inhabitants of ancient Earth for a one-of-a-kind experience, from towering woolly mammoths to elusive snow sloths terrifying saber-toothed tigers to resilient dwarf elephants, only three feet tall. This series reveals the epic struggles and unexpected stories of animals that once ruled the Ice Age. Viewers will journey through vast tundras, barren deserts, expanding grasslands, and melting permafrost as these creatures battle for survival in the face of extreme climates, shifting landscapes, and the onset of the Big Freeze, and ultimately the Big Melt." End quote. Okay, 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 so you want to know what types of critters might show up. So far, we have screenshots of what appears to be Homotherium, woolly rhinos, some type of giant ground sloth, a glyptodont, and Smilodon. The article also throws out dwarf elephants. 
Based on how slim the ground sloth is, its blonde fur, and the fact it's climbing in what appears to be a Grand Canyon-esque backdrop, I'm to assume this sloth is the Shasta ground sloth, Nothrotheriops shastensis. Remains of the animal have been found in Texas, New Mexico, and the La Brea Tar Pits. There have been caves found in the Grand Canyon containing piles of their dung, so insulated as to help preserve the organic material of animals that died in the cave, like the American cheetah. As such, I think we can assume the American cheetah and perhaps the entire Ice Age Grand Canyon ecosystem could show up. As for accuracy, I'm not a mammal expert, but it seems to follow most up-to-date reconstructions of giant ground sloths. Some work by Michael Deke has found that ground sloths may have been quite variable in their coat thickness, with very large ones being less hairy. But a mummy of this particular species exists and preserves a thick blonde fur. The baby on the back thing is based on ant eaters and sloths with us today. It's speculative behavior, but quite plausible. The woolly rhinos look spectacular. Yes, they really did have striped horns. You'd really have to try to get a woolly rhino wrong, since their soft tissues were very similar to modern rhinos, just with more fat, more fur, and slightly different anatomical details that set them apart as their own species. Plus, there are a handful of mummies known, so I expect them to be free from errors. These guys were around in Pleistocene and early Holocene Eurasia, but seemingly never fully made it into North America. One anomalous fossil is known from Alaska, suggesting they may have made it as far as woolly mammoths did, but that remains uncertain for now. With the Eurasian woolly rhinos, I think we can assume woolly mammoths will show up as well, plus the article already spoiled their inclusion. However, the major mammoth present in North America during the Pleistocene and early Holocene was the Colombian mammoth, Mammuthus columbi. This critter was a lot taller than the woolly mammoth and had such a broad geographic range that they definitely would have varied in coat thickness. In other words, some up north may have been woollier, while the ones in Mexico were probably more like modern elephants. I sure hope we get Colombian mammoths, the best mammoths, but considering what they have already said and shown will be in the series, I highly doubt they won't show up. The other critter that was present in the Eurasian steppe ecosystem was the Homotherium, a big scimitar-toothed cat, a distant cousin to Smilodon. These critters were less stocky than Smilodon and were more adapted for running down their prey. They were easily one of the most successful cat genera, lasting 10 million years from the Miocene to the Pleistocene at around 12,000 years ago. Some minor criticism of the facial reconstruction has been raised, namely that the lips form too tight of a seal around the smaller but still large saber teeth of Homotherium. Interestingly, an ice mummy of a Homotherium cub had been published last year, so it's possible that may have been enough time to implement into the show uh, but considering the two to three year void of information on prehistoric planet in general, I'm guessing they may not have had enough time. Skipping to the next critter, Smilodon. This one looks more like it's in a La Brea setting since there's more southwesty looking backgrounds. The anatomy is pretty good. Smilodon is one that is always discussed in a bunch of different ways, so I don't really want to touch on it right now. It deserves a lot more research. Lastly is the Glyptodont. It could be Glyptodon or Glyptotherium. I don't quite know the differences between the two yet, but I'm thinking you can tell from their shell ornamentations and the proportions of the face, both of which are hard to tell from this angle. I hope there is a South America episode in the series, but it would also be neat to see something covering the transition between North and South American fauna. So maybe the Smilodon plays into this episode regardless of if it's in North or South America. For what it's worth, this glyptodont looks quite a lot like what they should look like, though there is a lot less wiggle room with these guys than with other more enigmatic megafauna. Okay, now about things I want to be included. They said dwarf elephants, which makes me think of the island species of the Paleoloxodon genus, like Paleoloxodon falconeri of Sicily and Malta. However, there were seven species of dwarf Paleoloxodon throughout the Mediterranean. There were also many other dwarf elephants, but they are more commonly called mammoths, such as the Wrangell Island Mammoths, 
a dwarf population of woolly mammoths off the coast of Russia. There was also the Channel Islands mammoth, Mammothus exilus, off the coast of Southern California. There were a lot more, but that just goes to show you the diversity of answers the question of what they mean by dwarf could be. Any one of them is super interesting and rarely if ever shown in documentaries. I hope they do show some spotlight of super recent megafaunal extinctions, such as the Australian megafauna, New Zealand and Hawaiian bird faunas, or even the super weird reptiles of the Caribbean. What do you hope they show? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get our speculation caps on. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.